Good morning, Bitcoin. We're live from the Baltic Honey Badger Conference. It's day two, and we got ourselves a room. How about that? No more cloakroom for us. But we're joined by Jan from Slush Pool and Brain OS. They're working on some exciting new stuff with Bitcoin miners and firmware and software. How's it going, Jan? Hello, everybody. Uh, so today we're going to announce Brains OS, uh, which is an open source uh, firmware for miners. And our long term plan is to um, make it available also for other devices like full nodes and lightning nodes or anything, you name it, whatever you like. Um, basically, the, the, the main idea is that uh, we were having big problems with various uh, vendors uh, of hardware uh, and integrations with, with the pool itself and like trying to figure out like why a particular miner, which is obviously undocumented, doesn't work. And usually you didn't even have the source codes for it. So it was really hard to debug. So we decided we we're going to extend our software stack towards the miners coming up with a solution like this. And since we want to be the good guys, uh, we make it completely open source, hoping that some of the hash rate would uh, actually land in our pool. So this is pretty much it. Uh, today we would just want to announce it at the, at the, at the Bitcoin uh, Honey Badger component, and we'll see what happens next. So the current situation is that the mining software is closed source. You just don't really know what's going on with it. And you guys are going to change that by open sourcing it. What are the advantages for the miners if they switch to your software? Well, I think currently parts of the miners are open source because the manufacturers, they would be violating GPL. So technically, like if you want to compile your own firmware for, let's say, S9, you can get all the components somehow from, uh, from GitHub. Uh, but the problem is that this actually requires quite a bit of technical skill. So uh, verifying for an average user uh, that the firmware that's running in their miner is the thing that they would possibly be able to build from whatever the manufacturer provides is the same thing. Uh, so people usually don't, it's like with your, with your internet router at home, like, uh, how many people do actually flash it with something that they trust? They just, you know, buy it from a vendor and they just hope it's not going to call home and, you know, open some back doors to their home network and so on. So these are all problems that can only be solved by providing like completely transparent firmwares. Uh, and this is what we are trying to do. Um, yeah. Well, that, that sounds really great. What's the catch? Uh, what's wrong with this firmware? Is there any uh, downsides? You mean of our firmware? Um, well, the catch is that it's alpha, so we're starting with it. Uh, so we're really excited about the test reports, like what happens, how people like it. Obviously, there's a long way ahead of us because we want to continue developing this. Um, maybe one thing... Uh, I do remember is that uh, we currently support like two main devices. One of them is an S9i and the other one is Dragon Min T1. And for the Dragon Mins, we, for the first time, we tried also providing an open source bitstream. So now the full stack is completely open source. So there is not a single component, including a bootloader that, that would be like a binary blob or something like that. For the S9s, we still use uh, the original uh, bitstream uh, for the FPGA from, from Bitmain, but that's uh, like a technological issue that we would like to change in the future. But yeah, there's nothing we can do about it for the, for the time being. Yes, and so here at the WCN, we of course have the show Open Source Everything, and that's why it's so important to have a, a open and libre code where everyone can innovate with, without permission. Uh, so, of course, you are working uh, with this at the, at the Brains Company, but do you have other uh, contribu contributors as well? Well, uh, we've been uh, pretty uh, hidden as a company. Uh, for the past five years. It was for uh, various reasons, security and so on. So not too many people know that actually we have been operating the pool for many years already. Uh, but uh, we have some contributions uh, to the Bitcoin core, but like I think I personally co uh, contributed just some documentation stuff. And lately we have uh, come up with BIP 310, which is the version rolling extension. And actually this BIP, which which allows something called ASIC boost for, for some of the miners, so they're rolling the version bits in the version field of the of the Bitcoin block header. 
was the initial motivation to start digging into all the firmware details. And since our company originally made all his biz all its business on embedded devices, so we're like the systems programmers and so on, uh, we just decided to use this knowledge uh, in in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency field. And uh, certainly going back to Richard Stallman with open source, he always wanted to be able to edit the code that he was using, and he also wanted to be able to verify the way that it was running. And certainly with mining software, a lot of money is on the line. If a block gets lost, if you lose some of your reward, it could be a real problem. So I could see why people would want to switch uh, to an open source solution like that. Also, like you said, feedback is essential. Not only can you fix the open source project, even if you're not a technical person, you can say, this is broken. And and someone else can come along and fix it. Whereas with closed source software, often you'll just be ignored over and over again. So of course, uh, this is already amazing having the firmware for the miners. And you mentioned that we can have the same firmware for nodes and even lightning nodes. Uh, so what is happening here and why can you use the same software for both the miners and the nodes? Uh, let me explain this a little bit. Um, the whole software is built on OpenWRT, which is like a general purpose distribution, more aimed towards like routers, but you can pretty much use it for any embedded device. It's a very lightweight Linux distro with all the packaging. And so there's no problem to, I think it's even supported if, if you take your banana pie, uh, which has a SATA interface and you can just install the, the, the OpenWRT distribution on, on this board and then install a Bitcoin core node or lightning node or both of them or whatever and run them. Um, the barrier for, for average users obviously is that you can do this if you're a hacker. You can just, you, you have all, all the tools out there. The problem is that there is nobody really <clears throat> care, uh, caring about the support and like how to put this together. So. It's probably something like equ equivalent to if somebody puts uh, out a tutorial like how to run your full node on Banana Pi. So we would take care of this. But we, since our main business is uh, running the pool, we started from the mining side, obviously. But there, like, the the uses are probably endless. Uh, you can control your garden sprinkler, but this is like a different field. So I have my garden sprinkler <laughs> on the blockchain. It's safer that way. But that does sound great that you could open source the software. We would see open source nodes, open source miners, and eventually the entire ecosystem might be open source. So I, th I really think that's a positive goal. Well, uh, first of all, I, I hope there's a token sale. I hope there's an ICO uh, for the sprinkler on blockchain that's thoroughly needed in this market. It distributes them. It goes, <laughs> goes around. Um, so, of course, open source is amazing. And we have just out of the camera view, we have Matt Carolla sitting here. And he's worked on this uh, mining protocol called BetterHash, uh, which gives uh, more control to the individual miner in this mining pool. Um, so do you guys at Slush uh, are thinking of implementing this uh, cool t uh, piece of software? Actually, we were <clears throat> we were talking to Matt about this protocol for a long time, and uh, we did some reviews and suggestions. So this is definitely on the list to to talk about this again and open this topic. And that's right. It's all about collaboration with open source software. Anyone can contribute from anywhere in the world or any level of, of skill at code or even just skill at breaking software, which I'm great at. Um, but yeah, I really think it's a good project. Uh, where can people learn more about uh, Brain OS and Slushpool? So uh, if you want to check out the, the product website, it's called brainsos.org. Uh, you can follow us on uh, Twitter, on Brain Systems. Uh, and I'm sure Slushpool, uh, as one of our projects, also retweeted all these. So like the starting point, just go to, go to Slushpool's Twitter and you'll just start from there. Uh, and I hope it's going to gain some traction. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Monday to get some feedback, even if it was wrong, whatever. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Jan, for the interview.